All right, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am Bahamut, your caster. On the left, we are going to be having Macro Trash, and on the right, it is going to be Taco Team. This is a heroic division matchup between these two teams. Let's get into this, as we do have the coin flip was won by Macro Trash. They went ahead and banned out Volskaya Foundry. The uh, Taco Team went ahead and then banned out uh, Sky Temple. First map is going to be chosen by Macro Trash, giving first pick, first ban over to the members of Taco Team. Next map after this will be Dragonshire. This is a domination league, so it is only going to be a two games for this evening, but then we'll host over someone else. Just want to say hi, and just I'm excited about this. Let's get into the draft, though. Taco Team. Haven't casted them before. Don't know a whole lot about their, their specific picks and bans that they, they opt for, so I'm curious what they're going to be prioritizing in this draft. Um, this is the Heroic Division. We typically see a little bit more of, like a, I, I would say, mainline meta hero picks. Um, so on that kind of note, we can look to see maybe the Stukov, Maev, Garrosh, or Medivh being banned out in this situation. That's kind of what I'm going to guess. One of those, like, core four is really... at Malfurion as well, but... Um, prioritized, I think, a little bit more in this situation because I think the Stukov zone control is just so powerful that overall he's just, he's just you know, top-tier healer. So that will be on the table. But Macro Trash, considering the band themselves, what they're going to be going for. I'm going to take out that Maev. Not a bad idea. Getting rid of that would be uh, really, really instrumental for, for a lot of the team fights, and I really do enjoy, yeah, take that right off the table. Not going to want to see that in this game. First pick, though, I like the idea of the Stukov here, mostly because the fact that he just has really good point control on a map like this. Rex's holdup being it, it just crucial just to, to hold over those uh, those beacons as they charge up. Often a hero we do see, but I'm not sure. Could still be getting Malfurion, a lot of good zoning routes. First pick healers. It's an option, I just I don't know about it. <laughs> I don't know where you go into at this point. I, I like the start with a Stukov. It's a good opening to a draft. I just I don't know the teams that well, so I can't really talk to okay. And then they're going to go ahead. All right, so they're going to respond on the side of Macro Trash with an instant Malfurion ETC. Strong start for their draft as well. Overall, I like I like how these teams are, are opening up this, this game here. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at chats for different things, and I'm just like, wait, what? Oh, okay, never. All right. These next two picks, though, before we go into the ban phase. So Stukov's the opener. Garrosh is off the table. ETC's been picked up. I like the idea of grabbing the Diablo here. Um, I think it'd be a really, really strong opening to your draft, and then you maybe pick up some some dive damage with that. Um, I I would maybe say Phoenix, but only maybe just the priority to grab it. I would personally actually say Greymane. I think it would work really, really well with the Stukov Diablo uh, combination. Um, I like that as the start of the draft, and they can kind of flex around a little bit. But we'll see. I mean, Gul'dan could be a priority. Really good AoE at the start of this as well. They're going to grab the Hanzo Sonya, so they're going to be looking for their solo lane. Their, excuse me. Picking up their solo lane as well as Hanzo. Boss Shred is really, really powerful. Mobility is 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 just absolutely annoying to deal with. Uh, Poke is really good. Yeah, I, overall, I, I like the Hanzo pickup. But they're gonna need to they're gonna need to main tank on the side of Taco Team as well as some sort of wave clear into the potential Zerg wave that they could be facing. So at this situation, if I was on the side of Macro Trash, I would say if they're not picking up the Gul'dan themselves, maybe ban that out. Uh, I think it's it's really big for them. But it looks like they're gonna prioritize the Anubrak ban. That mean that they're gonna go into something a little bit more Okay, no, they go ahead and they they're gonna they're gonna ban out the Diablo. Yeah. Okay. That's why I was just like, but Diablo is still on the table and we just literally talked about it. Now on the side of Taco Team, there isn't really a whole lot that's been 
shown here. So they're going to go ahead and just take out what they don't really want to deal with, which is that Malfi on the solo lane into that Sonya. Curious to see, though, what they're going to be grabbing. Blaze is still an item here. And one thing I also want to talk about really quickly is that Chromie is an option for the members of Macro Trash. Uh, there is there isn't really a cleanse of it. They don't have a cleanse on the side of a taco team so that temporal loop can be just absolutely disruptive to a, a team composition especially and, and a hanzo as well being so so squishy an easy combo mid game from a chromie to blow them up but they're gonna go ahead and get what so we're gonna get a thrall that one i'm just like okay makes sense it's strong in the four man crash lightning but solo lane rexar Okay, okay, this is interesting. If 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 you're a fan of Rexar, and you know someone who's a fan of Rexar, go ahead and get him in this game because we're about to see it. Um, that's actually really really exciting. Uh, so we have that being picked up on the side of Macro Trash, and I'm just I'm I'm still just like I'm excited about this because like it is it is a I it. it I think it's 100% viable on a map like this. I'm curious to see what their response will be. Granted, they have the Sonya, so they already know what that matchup's going to be. They're going to need a main tank, and they're going to need some sort of clear on the side of uh, Taco Team. I, I like the Anoop rack that it was actually being hovered. Arthas isn't a horrible option either. We'll see what they pull out, and then they, they'll need wave clear. I think the Gul'dan... Ooh, okay, so they're going to go ahead and grab Gu Gunji. Uh, Genji. I don't know, I decided to say that his name weird there. Uh, so the Shimada Bros on the side of Taco Team with Joanna as well. I just, I'm still just like, and then there's a Rexar. All right, so that, we still need to figure out the rest of the four man for the members of Macro Trash here. It's going to be the Malfurion ETC Thrall, something else in the four man, and then they'll have Rexar in that solo lane. What do you do? What do you maybe grab? I, I still I still think the Chromie. Okay, so they're gonna go into the Gul'dan. Okay, they, they they needed mage needed a mage because they needed some sort of clear into the Zerg wave as I mentioned. Um, they don't have a ton on the side of uh, Taco Team, but they do have a few assets that are gonna be able to just kind of burn through the 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 mob of of the Zerg wave fairly well. So I, I don't think that they're they're kind of lacking in that in that department. It's it's the thing that I want to talk about is um, boss control. Because they've got quite a bit on the side of uh, Macro Trash, and even point control if you want to talk about that. I mean, we can, you know, horrify. You've got knockback from ETC. You've got Rexar diving in there the entire time. Thrall with potentially Sundering. I don't know. I, I, I like the engage, and I like the control that they have on the side of Macro Trash. We'll have to see... If it's going to be, you know, if they can keep control of the game, I think that's going to be the the keyword of this of this matchup here. Is I'm going to say it again, and I'm, I'm sick of saying it already. But control between these two, uh, between these two teams, who is going to be dominant over the beacons, as well as kind of show, you know, that their draft is going to work. I definitely think that there are a few things on the side of Macro Trash that. Once they hit a specific, specific like power spike or level or just questing talents that are kind of f through. Sorry, I'm just noticing who's on what, and I was I'm, I was thrown off by a second. I'm just like, I know some of these people, and I'm like, wait, you're not playing that? Okay, all right. Um, but I think that's that, that's gonna be the big big power shout. Soap girl, how you doing? Thanks for coming by. Uh, I think that's just gonna be the big power shovel. Let's get into it though. <laughs> yeah, just not even able to say uh, Genji's name correctly. Let's go ahead and get into this. On the left-hand side, we are going to be having Macro Trash with uh, Stormtrooper going to be on the Gul'dan, uh, Shade going to be on the Rexar, Spurback going to be on that Malfurion, Frank Duke's going to be on the ETC, and Hedgy going to be on that Thrall. On the right-hand side, we are going to be having Taco Team with uh, Valak going to be playing the Sonya. We're going to have Marmon, Marmoon on the Stukov, Marl O'Brien on the Joanna, and uh, Dunk Link, Dark Link is going to be on that Genji. Soap Girl, I do appreciate that follow. Sorry that it didn't go through. I will turn that right back on after this game, or at least 
show that your alert went through. I do appreciate that follow. Let's go ahead and get right into this as we do have the four man currently in this bottom lane. It is going to be, as we kind of talked about in draft, the Shimada bros, that that Joanna, as well as the Stukov going into the Thrall, Malfurion, uh, Gul'dan, and ETC. Just peeking up into top really quickly, Valak versus Shade. This is this is interesting. I'm going to try and keep an eye on this, but most of our fun is going to be in this bottom lane as we do have the uh, Lurking Arm coming out from Marmoon. They're just going to be zoning these guys out and making sure that it's a little bit harder for that ETC to get those proc rock stacks. The other thing to note here is that uh, Hedgy went into stealing that regen glove, that denial. Uh, we had Hedgy on that throw going into the Crash Lightning, so those stacks are going to be coming through fairly... Start, starting to go up uh, quite a bit. You, Kimchi, hi, hi, hi. And the other thing to note really quickly is we have the um, Corruption stacks going out from that Gul'dan. That's going to be a little devastating as we have a Power Slide in from the ETC. Dark Link going to be diving in. Deflect going to be coming out from that Genji. The other thing I just want to note really quickly is that Hanzo did go into those redemption stacks, so we will have the uh, uh, increased auto attack speed once that is achieved. ETC going to go ahead and get a power slide in here. Dark Link going to be backing off, just poking onto these beacons as they are going to be activating at this time. We do have Stukov getting that clear onto the wave as Spurbeck and Stormtrooper are just getting some work onto that backline, poking in there. Pulling from Joanna. We are going to be having top uncontested this time. Mara Brian a little bit low, going to have to back out at this time. Never heard of these teams with Tucker Team Sounds Cool. This is my favorite team. Well, there you go. You got we got someone you got someone to cheer for in this matchup as they are gonna go ahead and uh control the beacon for now. We're gonna Misha ju jumping on that point, gonna stall it out, and it looks like they will go ahead and cap both of these. Actually, Mar Brian gonna have something to say about that as Dark Link dives in on that Genji. Gonna get that deflect onto quite a few members. Looks like they do have quite a good poke. There is gonna be the pustule spreading through some of them from Marmoon on that Stukov as they go ahead and hold this bottom beacon in favor for Taco Team. Meanwhile, on top, we're gonna have this little sp little back and forth between Misha and uh, Sonya. Gonna have to get the bear out of there as that will be top converted over in favor for the members of Taco Team. Dark Link gonna stall this out. They wanna make sure that no more charge goes over and they're gonna be able to get that for now. Okay, it looks like Hedgy will go ahead and stall that out as fours are gonna be achieved for both teams about simultaneously. A little bit of a fight breaking out over this point. It looks like this will be held over for the members of Taco Team. This will be charge going over in their favor. I gotta say, slow. I mean, they're, they're playing it slow at this time. I do gotta say, we like turtles and Iyo Kimchi. Thank you for the follows. I do appreciate that. I'll get those alerts out once we're out of this game. As we do have this this bottom point still being held over by the members of Taco Team. Hedgy kind of playing around, trying to see if maybe they go in and install it out. Not going to be happening as Sonya is battling the bear. Dark Link has rotated up though at this time. I think once they see that they might be able to go in a little bit harder in bottom lane. Shade going to be trying to work on Sonya as it looks like that will be Rexar having to back off and Misha going to be following. But they stall out bottom so this is going to be a trade almost like what you see on Dragonshire quite often. And that is going to be our next map so maybe see the same play come out from both these teams. Either way, though, we are going to be having this bottom held over by Macro Trash as the Genji rotates down. Taco Team now with their four players. That is going to be the dash through to get that kill on to Frank Jukes. First kill of the game going over to Taco Team here. Almost four minutes in the game. Rex are going to stall this out. They're getting such small percentages on the side of of Taco Team. It's just it's just this this delay, this delay, and, and they keep doing it so well. Um, and the other thing, too, is they're stacking up quite a few... Um, abilities at this time as well. I mean, looking at Thrall's Crash Lightning's already at 12 stacks, getting far up there. We have Gul'dan at 21. They are going to be having this held over at this time. There is going to be the Lurking Arm out. The Body Blocks coming out from Marl Bryan are going to be so strong. ETC with that Power Slide in. Going to knock them off the point here as Draco is going to be just poking in on that Hanzo. And it looks like Spurbeck will be holding this over. They do have Dark Link rotating down at this time with the majority of the team. Going to spread that Pustule to friendly teammates and uh, get them healed up and get ready to go in for another battle as it looks like bottom is going to be contested once again there is going to be lurking arm pushing frank jukes off they are going to be able to hold on to this point it's a huge asset was which uh, what i was getting at in in draft a bit is is having the the lurking arm for that zone control that point control so huge as hedgy gets slowed quite a bit dark link gonna dive in not gonna get that kill right away so we do currently have just this battle breaking out but that will be etc falling as it looks like this will be held over in bottom lane. Top lane, though, we do have Sonya getting so low. 
and that will be Sonya getting out with just a couple hundred health, but Shade Solo themselves going to sacrifice. Poor animal handler. That will be Misha falling at this time, but Zerg in full force in the top lane. Gonna have to rotate uh, the majority of the team to get that clear. Gonna go ahead and though leave the throw on bottom lane just to split soak at this time. Meanwhile though, Dark Link trying to get onto Shade. Not gonna be working out, no kill just yet. That would have been huge from them if they could have grabbed that, but Marl Bryan gonna be walking right into the gate at this time. Power side gonna be coming through, the unstoppable is there. Taking half their health, but that was... Uh, I guess, I mean, Marmoon is up at this time. Stukov gonna get that heal. Oh, dive in from Dark Link, but they're gonna go ahead and get so much stall at this time. Not gonna die. It looks like they do get that kill onto the Rex. Are gonna be pushing up into this top lane quite a bit more. And this will be our slide out from Frank Jukes. I'm just like, I'm like, oh no, we're gonna be getting another kill. Dark Link gonna be going ahead and getting another reset. Genji just tearing up ETC this game. As it looks like Mara Bryant gonna be falling so low. Stormtrooper with so much damage. And just to note, that was, you know, that's all from Fell Flame and Corruption. That Corruption hasn't been finished yet as they continue to go in a little bit here. And this might be the death of them as they do have Dark Link diving onto that back line. The Unstoppable is used. Misha gonna go ahead and get the stall or at least the stun for a couple seconds. Dark Link gonna jump over that wall at this time. They get out with just a little bit of health and they poke that out. Almost getting the fort, but definitely, whoo-wee, that was, that was a good push, and that's going to push them extremely close to 10s as well. Camp's going to be the rotation for both teams, as we are going to be having the uh, Bruiser Camp grabbed by the members of Macro Trash. Uh, Siege Camp going to be grabbed as well. <laughs> thank you, Rag. Smash that follow button. And they did. I do appreciate it. Thank you to, thank you to all the new follows that were happening during this game. We will make sure those alerts go off after the matchup here. Camp's just going to be rotated picked up by both teams, creating a little bit of map pressure for, you know, both to deal with. And the other thing, too, is the members of Macro Trash, they don't want to fight at this time. They're so close to 10 on the side of Taco team, it would be a horrible choice just to even try and fight this. So they're going to go ahead, they're going to rotate out, get these camps. They're going to go ahead and do the pretty, pretty much the exact same thing. They're going to rotate around, get some clear here. As it looks like 10s are achieved by Taco team, we do have that Bless Shield, uh, Dragon Arrow, Massive Shove, Leap, and Dragon Blade. Did I get that right? Dragon's arrow, yeah. Dragon strike, because it's it's always the opposite of what I think they are. It's because dragon strike sounds more like dragon arrow to me. Because it's a strike and it's a stun rather than the arrow that becomes a dragon. Either way, we have this little bit of a push down here in bottom as uh, it looks like Shade trying to defend up against this four man. And in response, I think that they're going to try and do the exact same thing on the side of Macro Trash in this top lane as Sonya dives in a little bit. But I think the siege potential is quite strong on the side of Macro Trash as they're making easy work of that gate. But the thing is, there is way... There's, there's a lot less for them to deal with on the side of Taco Team. They get that easy fort. Members of Macro Trash, they're going to be backing off at this time. Frank Duke's going to be going ahead and grabbing the regen globe. Working closer for those proc rock stacks. Hedgy, though, going to be stalled out. Going to go ahead and get the... Uh, Frost Wolf out there, and I don't know if that was a bait to finish the quest. No, I think it was already done at this time. Uh, but Sonya you know, going ahead and getting right in there and, and getting that interrupted. As we do have a little bit of a dive happening under the Sonya. Will be the power slide through. And that will be Sonya getting out just fine. There is going to be that healing. A level four that was picked up that battle rage. I can't not remembering the talent right either way. Frank Jukes is going to be the apple of their eyes. It looks like they're diving in. Dark Link a little far forward, but that Dragon Arrow gonna be huge. The sounds though out from Spurbeck at this time. They get the kill onto the Genji and they start to turn this around. Racco is so low here. Going to be getting out just fine. And so this is the big thing that I want to note. Stukov has finished the Echoed Corruption. And their point poking is going to get only stronger and stronger on the side of Macro Trash here. As it looks like they're going to go ahead and hold over top. Bottom is going to be uh, stalled out by Valak. But this time, ooh, nice big ol' uh, slow hundo with a couple of those members. As Hedgy just walks in, grabs the region globe for, for them. And it looks like they have swapped out their lanes. Frank Juke's going to be, though, in that bottom lane. Did take the uh, stage dive, so going to be able to kind of play that ETC a little bit on the global side. Stage dive at this time going to be going into the backline. Power slide going to be going out. It's going to be the follow-up stun. There is also the earthquake, and they start to burn down. Stukov, that will be one kill. Dragonblade going to be out at the same time. Stormtrooper going to go ahead and get that kill onto the Genji as Marl 
Brian gonna be falling here. Sonya leaping in. Spurbeck so low in this situation. They get the knockback onto Valak. But I don't think this Sonya is long for the world as they get another kill. That will be a five-man wipe. They go ahead and rotate Spurbeck into this bottom lane position. Boss? I was just about to say, five are dead. You've got enough time. That will be Boss being picked up as uh, Misha's going to be working on that cam. <laughs> Shade going to be taking a lot of that damage. And I like how they're kind of splitting this up here. Going to get Misha back on that. Either way, that will be charge going over for uh, the members of Macro Trash. They're also going to be going ahead and picking up this boss. On top of that, the members are back from the side of Taco Team. So they will be able to maybe stall this out. Marmoon going to go ahead and get on the point. They did hearth back the, uh, the Thrall at this time, so that will be 88% on the uh, the charge there. Misha just going to be on this point, just just running around, just being a happy little bear. Genji going to dive in, trying to get the death. There will be the heal. Power slide out, though. It was a good setup as they go ahead and they burn down Dark Link. That will be the kill onto the Genji, and that's exactly what they need. Horrify going to come out. There was also the massive shove on the ETC. Going to go ahead and have that stage dive into that back line once... Really far to the back line. Uh, but they also got that kill onto the Stukov there. There will be the follow-up power slide, and that will be a kill onto the Hanzo. There will be Marl Bryan going to be the next one. And here's the thing. During all that, Boss has been pushing into bottom lane. They've got double they've got they've got top and bottom lane pressure they're gonna go ahead and grab this camp this will feed in with their uh, zerg wave i wouldn't be too surprised to see him siege with this as strong as much as they can while the boss just does work in bottom the plays that are coming out from macro trash in this later half is and this is exactly what i was talking about the power spike there's a certain point that this composition hits and i think it becomes extremely powerful they had a lot of really good picks on the side of taco team and i'm wondering if that's exactly what they need to do they need to maybe just get into that back lane try and find someone who's maybe a little too far you know, away from the team and can't be, uh, can't be helped, but they're gonna go ahead and need to just kind of defend this as best they can. Marl Bryan gonna go ahead and use that Unstoppable already. The, that Condemn came out just to try and pull them together. Frank Duke's gonna get a Power Slide. There will be the Root right underneath, and they start to burn down Marl Bryan. There is no Unstoppable as they go ahead and they get that kill, and they're gonna move on further here. Top lane gonna be losing a keep during this Zerg Wave push as they continue to Aggress even harder. Massive shove going to be coming out. Actually going to be connecting onto the ETC all the way out of here. I do not think that there's a stage dive available. Actually, it is available at this time. So stage dive could be happening. And that's exactly what we're going to be having. Is Genji going to flip over that wall? There will be the knockback onto one of the members. Sonya going to be leaping over the wall. But this is a small percent on the Zerg wave. They start to set their eyes maybe onto the core. As Genji going to be popping the Dragon's Blade. Massive shove going to be coming out once again. Power slide out from Frank Jukes. Might have been too far as they start to get the collapse. And this is exactly what... I was talking about this is what they need they got that chase they went ahead and got that ETC will they be able to go further no what uh that was that was a huge just that entire back and forth it was absolutely insane now the thing is ETC will be back in 26 seconds they might be able to take an advantage with this and I think that's what taco team's trying to do they're gonna try and invade this camp and I don't think ETC has the stage dive available Root gonna be going out they start to dive in Spurbeck gonna have to pop the ice block but I don't think it will be enough as there is the silence they don't get the kill and that will be Malfurion falling as Marl Bryan very low here Misha I think starting to trying to stay on this point as Marmoon, so many of the members are just within a couple hundred health. They need to move in here. That will be the kill onto Stukov. We do have Shade going ahead and moving in further. Hedgy going to grab that point. Sonya going to be falling at this time. Marl Bryan going to be chased by Stormtroopy and Hedgy. I don't know if they're going to be able to get out. I think that... And stage dive! Um... I, I was like, I don't think, I was I was like, did she have Unstoppable? I can't remember if if the Joanna had used it earlier in that fight. But it looks like at this time with 17 to 14 and these three members dead, they want to they go ahead and end this game as quickly as possible. And that's, I think, the goal this time is we do have some poke going out onto the core. Shields are still up. They're going to be melting down fairly quickly, it looks like, as we do have Sonya back at this time. This could be a little risky. Core losing percent. Leap going to be going in on to Stormtroopy as they start to get so much damage out. Horrify will be there as well. Massive shove going to be on to Frank Jukes as it looks like Dark Link going to be so low. No kill just yet. There is going to be the Earthquake coming out from the Thrall at this time. Knockback from Frank Jukes as it looks like they get the core down to 56%. Spurback going to be back at this time healing up the members as needed. But the Beacons are going to be charging as well. So 50%... On the core, next Zerg wave, Zerg wave for the members of Macro Trash will be in this bottom lane. But here's the thing. This top lane, this is easy experience for the members of Taco Team. And that's kind of their entry in, back into this game here. Getting 16, taking a good fight, especially over these beacons. As we do have Frank Jukes checking the boss, making sure they're not there. Also going to be able to go ahead and just play that 
that bottom beacon? I'm looking at the mini-map and they're, they're kind of doing this dance in between the two. I think Frank Jukes should have... Stage Dive is available. And I'm sorry, I keep clicking on heroes to find out what their, what their cooldowns are. It's only because there's, there's, a, there's a UI bug and unfortunately we cannot see the, the cooldowns for heroic abilities. So it's just one of those things I always want to be like, is there a Stage Dive? Are we going to get Stage Dive into the back line? But this time this will be bottom lane held over by the members of Taco Team. Looking for to catch them in this rotation, but it's not going to be happening as they go ahead and play this on the safe side. They're not going to want to take any sort of fight outside of having 16. So they went ahead and just grabbed this camp. It will kind of push up a little bit. They're getting some side soak from these lanes as we do have Genji getting that as well. Frank Duke's going to be poking in and just, you know, putting his look, his head out there, seeing what's up. But this will be 16 achieved for the members of Taco Team. Shade going to go ahead and get the clear onto that camp that was there for a second but they rotate their entire team down at this time and it looks like there will be a bit of a fight or at least a small brawl now the thing is they can play this as slow as possible on the side of macro trash they have catapult pressure on top and we can already see that there's two amounting and they're gonna have to back off eventually misha's gonna be on this point so you're gonna be spearing in there will be the blind coming out they want to start to take this fight as misha gets so low they do lose the bear at this time Genji going to be diving in. Sonya going to be leaping in, making a huge connection. So many of the members falling low, but there's also going to be the silence out. Horrify as well. So many of the heroics being used. We do have Genji getting out just fine. Spurback going to be a little bit low at this time. There will be Frank Jukes getting that uh, stage dive, excuse me, stage dive into the back lane. There was the massive shove on top of that. As it looks like this fight is continuing in the lane. Meanwhile, though, this is the thing that I was talking about. They can play this as slow as they want. There are catapults currently sitting on the core. They're going to need to back at some point, and this is the thing. They can keep chasing them. If they can stall them out from backing, if they keep them from getting to their core, the catapults will win them the game, and that's going to be a dive on to the Stukov. Marl Brian not going to be living as well. Genji going to be back at this time, getting the clear onto those catapults that did just take out the uh, the shielding there, but the rest of the team, I think they know with those two kills, they might be able to take this, and they're going to go ahead and rotate to the top lane? Yes. Uh, that will be just, they're going to be trying to push this up a little bit further as Thrall goes ahead and grabs the Zerg wave, or at least the beacon in top lane, to get that last little bit of charge. So if they do, they do lose this, there is some sort of, you know, kind of I wouldn't say consolation, but there's there's a little bit of a backup for them in, in case they do drop this. There will be this Zerg wave just amounting in bottom lane. And they're going to go ahead and just play this slow. Macro Trash isn't going to try and force the end through top lane. Alright, Sidewall going to be taken out. Zerg wave going to be coming down the lane. Top lane though, just really quickly. That, that, almost, 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 um, little Zerglings. Uh, but this is going to be the wall taken out fairly quickly. 75% on this Zerg wave as it does go right onto the, to this keep at this time. 20s are really, really close. Leap going to be coming out from the Sonya. Dragon Arrow going to be following up as well. They get the kill onto Gul'dan extremely early, and that's a huge pick for them. There is going to be the silence coming out from Spurbeck, but there's also going to be the counter kill onto the Genji. Stage Dive going to be coming down at this time. They get the Joanna Massive Shove going to be connecting onto the ETC, pushing them so, so, so far away as they get the kill onto the uh, Sonya at this time. Going to be turning on to, onto the Stukov. ETC just got shoved so far away. But that is going to be game number one going over to the members of Macro Trash. GG, well played. It was closing day for us at the mountain. Let's go ahead and get into this. We're going to be going to Dragonshire. Badcaster didn't update things. Uh... They were just scared of the beard. Cowhead, thank you. <laughs> How you doing? I mean, I, I've i casted this team before. They shouldn't be afraid of, of anything. Um, team score. All right. Let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, we have Garrosh being banned out by Macro Trash, or at least being hovered at this time. And so that was one of the things that we did talk about in the, uh, in the first game. There's, you know, in the Heroic Division... It's, ooh, I have a new friend request. Um, there are, you know, quite a few, like, standard standard bans and stuff that, that I've been seeing from, from a lot of these teams. And, you know, it's been typically the uh, Garrosh, Stukov, Maev, 
um, Medivh. It's, you know, those core four seem to be the ones that these, these teams don't really want to deal with too much. Um, and the other thing too, I mean, like, uh, there, there's a decent amount of, like, Phoenix that comes through, but I don't think a lot of the teams are, are too afraid of it. Um, it, did it. Blizzard. Do I have too many friends? Blizzard. <laughs> I can't cast all these teams and 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 uh, now I have to. Oh, this is gonna be fun. All right, let's go ahead. Let's actually get into this draft. Um, or it's just for some reason bugging out. And I, it kicked everyone from from the draft, which was weird. I've never heard that happen before. Um, but that will be a Maya ban coming out from the members of uh, Taco Team as first pick. Last game we saw a first pick Stukov come out from Taco Team. I believe the one two from Macro Trash was the Malfurion ETC. Curious to see if they go along that route and also what they're going to be playing on, on Dragonshire. But they're going to go ahead and get Hanzo. Uh, really good. I mean, it's mobility, vision, poke. And on a map like Dragonshire, poke is very, very, very important. But that is going to be a very quick Stukov Diablo grab. And I'd be a little afraid of this because that is a terrifying duo. Um, I'm not saying it's GG well played. You, you, know, you, you picked it up, you win the game, but it is... It's something like, I, I mean, we were playing it on uh, when we were uh, team leaguing over the weekend, and it was just like game two, someone was just like, we can't play against this. And I was like, I can't, no. Because I just get flipped and stunned every time. At least because I, I, I didn't, I haven't played enough against the Diablo. But next two picks, though, coming out from the members of Macro Trash. They've got the Hanzo. They can maybe go ahead and grab their main tank as well as their heal here. So it's a little bit harder to ban out towards the... The second ban phase, you can, you know, you can focus on, you know, either something you know someone's strong on or you ban out, like, a, something your team doesn't want to deal with. Like, what we saw last game, that Malthiel ban um, coming out from the members of Taco Team. But I personally say I like the I like the Malfurion. I also really like an ETC here. And it makes sense. I mean, it's, a, it's... What is up with his mouth? Why does Malfurion's mouth just do that? He just, he just like, gapes. He just gapes at you. And I think... A little bit of my green screen going. Oh, birds. All right. No, it's my cursor. Uh, ban, ban wise though, let's go ahead and get right into that. As we do have that Malfurion ETC Hanzo on the side of Macro Trash. This, this is what I was talking about. It's you, you look at this ban and you're just like, um, well, what don't we want to deal with in our composition here? They're gonna need a solo laner. And they're going to be needing... Oh god, it's Dragonshire. There's so many options. I mean, there's so much... There was Chen over the weekend. Though I don't know if it worked. I can't remember off the top of my head. Hmm. I think maybe just take out that Malthio. They didn't want to deal with the first game. No, they go ahead and they take out that Gul'dan. That was that was actually that that I I do want to note that that was it was extremely strong in that game one. The poke damage that came out from the Gul'dan, and then once all the stacks were finished as well, Gul'dan was strong. It was very 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 strong, and there was so much damage over time. Most of the most team fights you'd see just the so many members just health just dropped to about half. Um, at least and also be damage over time. But they're gonna go ahead and ban out the Genji here, not wanting to deal with that. It was actually fairly strong. Dark Link's Genji in that last game was really, really devastating the early half, and then they just started to turn around on them. I think it was just maybe the power spike, or they, they just learned. They figured out the, the die? I, I don't know. I don't want to assume too much on that front, but... Hmm. Next two picks, though. On the side of Taco Team. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, sorry. Just just checking messages. All right. Um, next two picks. Gosh, so many options for Dragonshire. They could go ahead and grab their. Uh, they haven't picked up the solo lane, so they might be able to flex on that. They can pick up their main two sources of damage, like maybe. I personally like a Lunara here. I think it's a really good poke, but at the same time, I think Lee Ming would be really beneficial. And then something on top of that, like a Gray Main for resets, could be beneficial. And then it works well with the dive from Stukov. 
and then you pick up a Li Ming. Oh, okay, so they're gonna go ahead and grab Leoric. Leoric is gonna be for their solo lane. Not a bad idea. It makes tanking into him a little bit more difficult, so you have to maybe play something a little bit on the squishier side. I personally like, I like the mouthfeel in this situation. I think it could be huge for them. They don't have anything to deal with any sort of last rites. They don't have a cleanse either. It's another thing we can talk about. And I was like, oh man, they could pick up a Chromie, but that's double range. But at the same time, I mean, the poke from Chromie could be huge. And then going into that Leoric, maybe you pick up that Malthiel. You get that, you get that, you know, percentage based onto him as well. Hmm. No, Tychus makes more sense, actually. Rip Cigar. Um... Oh, oh, okay. All right, I was actually thinking. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, I like it, I like it. Commandeer Odin is extremely strong. It's a lot of good zone potential, uh, as well as um, anti-siege, siege. It's, it's, it can, I, I honestly think Tychus is, is undervalued, and I personally, I always, you know, he falls out of my own memory, but he has a lot of really good slots, and this is one of them. The other thing that they've also done on the side of Macro Trash is they picked up two percentage-based um, damage dealers. And that's going to be huge into a map where, one, it's, it's you know, you have a Dragonite, which percentage-based health, high health pool. You can burn through it quite quickly. The other thing, too, Diablo and Leoric, I feel like they might get shredded here. Jaina, though, being picked up last on the side of Taco Team, didn't really talk too much about this. I, the setup from it could be huge for them. Slowing could be a huge asset for the Greymen. I think that there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of good things that they've got on the side of Taco Team into their later half of the game. And I'm wondering to see if Macro Trash will be able to respond to that. Because I do think that once they hit 10, I think there's going to be a big burst of, of power from, from uh, Team Taco. I don't know why I want to say it backwards. Taco Team. Uh... At the same time, though, I mean, you've got last rights, you've got dragon arrow, you've got stage dive potentially. I liked how they utilized it last game. I'm trying to think of there's there's quite a few interrupts from Mosh Pit. I think they go into that once again, but we're gonna find out here. Game number two between these two teams on the left hand side, up one game. We are going to be having macro trash with Stormtroopy gonna be on that Hanzo. Shade going to be on the Malthiel. Hedgy going to be on the uh, Tyka Spurbeck on that Malfurion. And Frank Jukes on the ETC. On the right-hand side, we are going to be having... Sorry, just making sure I get that out. Uh, we're going to be having Taco Team with Darklink going to be playing the Jaina. Uh, Valak going to be on the Leoric. Uh, Marmoon going to be on the Stukov. Mar O'Brien on the Diablo. Uh, Draco gonna be and sorry yeah and Draco on that on that uh, gray main I was just like I feel like there's there's one more teammate why why would you think that let's go ahead here as we actually have Macro Trash running top lane this isn't something I've actually seen typically you see a lot of teams maybe cheese bottom but Frank Jukes they're all they're all out here they're gonna go ahead and just burn down the sidewall as the response is gonna be coming out from just Valak actually the rest of the team gonna be working in this mid. They go ahead, they burn down the tower. Experience is about the same, but here's the thing. And this is, I, I'm sure I'll make this point like 30 times on this map. But whole, getting getting top and bottom opened up is huge for you. Mid lane, yeah, you you know, it, it's it's beneficial. You've got, you know, it's a little bit harder to pick up that Dragonite. But holding having, ooh, having the ability to hold over those points is going to be huge. As Stormtrooper gets over that wall, the route will be going out from Spurbeck. They wanted to potentially get that fight there as Marmoon set up with... Healing spread to the entire team. All right, but the rotation going to be in this bottom lane onto Hedgy. Overpower going to be happening. Body block's going to come out. Mara going to be taking tower shots as they go ahead and get some poke right back out. That will be the lurking arm slowing them down as Hedgy goes ahead and taps well. But now we're going to be seeing these uh, these lanes kind of just fall into place here as we have Valak going into Shade. That will be the solo lane matchup. Draco, though, going to be going ahead and grabbing the Siege Camp very early. Going to be having that pressure. I really like that play from them. Because it looks like this will be the four-man rotation ETC. Mm. I'm judging your, your proc rock stacks. Um, going to try and get this rotation to mid. Not going to be missing out on, I think, any experience there. But this will be, I'd say, the rotation's a little, little in favor for Taco Team as they will go ahead and grab this uh, bottom altar at this time. Vision going to be coming out from the Hanzo. 
Hope gonna be going out. The other thing to note is that there were the redemption stacks picked up by the Hanza. We don't actually have that simple geometry. Shade gonna be holding over the top lane at this time. Relic getting a little bit low. Just the back and forth between these two. Spurback currently in that mid, pushing that up, making sure they get that experience. Just looking at talents also really quickly. It looks like Jaina went into an Ice Lance build, so I'm not going to be having those, um... Frost Fingers? I... That's not the right level one. Um, but it's it's the regen globe questing talent, as we do have ETC going to be rotating through these lanes, trying to pick those up. We're just going to be having the swaps of lanes between these two. And this is just the, the slow part of, of Dragonshire is this early part as we have Stormtrooper not going to be in the best spot. Going to be getting a leap over that wall. Huge four ma three man route coming out from Spur back there. They will be chased off here at the same time though. Really good healing coming out from Marmoon. Going to keep that team up to full as it looks like they tap well for Mana. Going to go ahead and continue just holding over bottom lane though. Peeking in top though between Shade and Valkyrie. <laughs> Just the back and forth. The other thing, Shade, just really quickly to know, is, is getting quite low on mana, so that might be an issue um, sustain-wise in this lane. But either way, we're just going to have them going back and forth to get that channel, as it will be in favor for them on the side of Taco team. No collection available. Frank Juke's going to be potentially grabbed here. Power Slide going to get them right out of there, but they have the vision of the four of these members. They know that they want to steal this camp away, and I think that is actually going to be... Oh no, they're going to be working their way in here. There is a rude that's going to be coming out from Malfurion. Draco a little bit low. They actually get the camp here, but do they lose the... Nope, they're not going to be losing Diablo at this time because there was a nice lurking arm that came out from Stukov, making sure that they had to back off as... They were getting a little bit low there. It was getting a little little worrisome, but at this time, uh, Valkyrie getting pushed in as top lane is uh, still being held over by that Malfiel. Meanwhile, though, in bottom, we do have Hedgy trying to cap onto this point. Frank Dukes is set up for the cap for the Dragonite, but without the entire team, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. And this is going to be the death of Hedgy. That will be the first kill of the game going over to the members of Taco Team. Meanwhile, though, just mid. Just going to be having clear from Dark Link. This camp, though, going to be grabbed by the members of... Ooh, Frank Juke's going to be rotating in. Tychus not available this time. Pop back from death, but Frank Juke's just going to be power sliding in. A little bit of a knockback. They start to invade on this. Are they able to steal it? This is 3v3. Dark Link has rotated down at this time. Pustle goes out. Tychus is back. Power slide going to be going out. The knockback will be there. They get the kill onto Diablo very, very early, but this will also be the kill onto Jaina as well. And this is starting to go a little south for the members of Taco Team, as it looks like that will be the camp picked up in their favor. For Macro Trash, they'll also go ahead and grab the uh, altar in bottom lane. They don't have anyone available for the capture, but they are rotating Frank Jukes up for that. And I don't think they're going to be able to stall this out. It looks like this will be first Dragonite going over in favor for the members of Macro Trash. Peeking into top lane really quickly. Valkyrie's getting low there from the from the Malfiel. Shade definitely doing work in that top lane as they go ahead and they split the assets with the Dragonite. And I really like this. They're they're making them make it. They're, they're forcing them to make a choice. It's, do you give up assets in the mid or assets in the bottom? And they're gonna go ahead and actually have their Stukov in that mid. They don't have a tank for bottom lane. Frank Jukes is in that Dragonite. That is the one thing I do want to note. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna poke out onto this this well here. And that was the one thing that I said I was going to say it 30 times probably. Taking out the well. And that's exactly what you see in mid lane as well. Taking that out and making sure that they don't have that lane sustained. That's huge for a team. Having that ability to go back and just tap well. I, I personally think this is one of the, the, the most important maps to have your well. I mean, you, you often see it, you know, Infernal Shrines. It's another great example of having that to sustain for these long... Because you're going to get a lot, a lot of long-winded fights, as we did see in that bottom lane. It was about five minutes before we even had the first Dragonite, uh, you know, capture available for these teams. Mostly because of just the, the back and forth between the two. Overall, though, they're going to be going ahead, grabbing the Siege Camp. They also, they achieve tens at this time, so they can rotate around the map. Kind of play this a little bit more aggressive than you typically would see. And actually, the one thing I want to note is, so we have all of the, you know, the standard uh, pickups, but we're actually going to be getting the Mosh Pit out from the uh, the ETC. So no stage dive in this game. Not going to be playing that that global aspect. Um, Greyman going to be going ahead and grabbing that. We do have Shade getting uh, that... Not leeching plasma. That's that's a Tassadar talent. Spectral leech. There we go. From the uh, from the Leoric there as uh, Draco will be going ahead and getting out as they picked up that camp. Mid lane though. 
Gonna be just cleared out by Hedgy, making sure that they try and keep their, their level advantage in favor. Rotation gonna be coming out from the team as they went ahead and picked up that siege camp for bottom lane. And at this time, it's gonna be fairly even between the two teams. Playing this a little slow. They don't really want to take a fight unless they have to. I think they're mostly waiting for these this, this beacon phases. They are gonna be sieging in a little bit on the side of Macro Trash. Bottom lane gonna be pushed in a little bit. Top lane, though, you do have that camp with with Mal into Maltheo and Leork, so we'll have to take a peek at that when we can. This time, though, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna try and siege in on this. Gonna go ahead and poke out. Doesn't look like they're setting up for any sort of fight. Okay. I'm just like, I'm waiting for it. Like, I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting with like literally bated breath. Aislinn, thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it. Sorry that it does, it doesn't go off during, during the cast of games, but we, we just have it off during cast. Go ahead and get that, that alert off when we get out of here as we do have Dark Link and Valak in this top lane. Malthiel doesn't know that it's just the Leork, so I'm wondering if they're going to try and bait them. Shade, I don't think knows but at the same time there's a lot of members missing on map dark link gonna be rotating out at this time as they do have the four man in bottom pushing quite hard and they're gonna go ahead and take out this fort and that actually forces the rotation out from dark link back into the team as they go ahead and take the get out of here get out of here with that just a little bit left onto that fort as they go ahead and they grab the bottom uh altar in their favor that will be the altar f the that the bottom fort falling shade into Valkyrie here going to be holding this over against them but stormtrooper in mid setting up i think for maybe a capture red going to be going out from from the stuke off looks like they want to start this fight power slide going to be coming out from the etc there is the root right underneath so much damage going to be coming out the hanzo arrow from downtown huge mosh pit as well they go ahead and they get the kill the apocalypse stalling this out for a couple seconds as it looks like there is the availability for the capture onto the dragonite flailing swipe going to be coming out from marmoon and they continue to do damage as those stacks are going to be taking down the armor so very quickly and they start to just shred the stuke off that is a double kill in that situation that was huge for them. That dragon arrow from the top lane didn't even see it coming as Spurback is going to be rotating out. We do have Shade grabbing the Dragonite at this time. 14 to 12 as they go ahead and they push into the mid lane. And they even grab the camp right below it to push into bottom. Continuation of this match is, is really, really strong for Macro Trash here as we do have Taco Team going to be getting to 13 at this time. On the even talent tier, going to be able to defend this. Able to poke, they're going to want to wait till the Dragonite kind of burns. They're going to have to just kind of give over the gate. They don't really want to fight too much around that. Maybe if they could get a, they could get a, a an overpower and a charge, and a shadow charge onto one of these members. But they're playing behind this Dragonite so very well. Also, that siege camp is huge for them. Frank Duke's going to be finishing those that proc rock stack there as we do get onto this keep Dragonite at about fifty five percent. We do have the keep falling at this time. There will be the knockback from Frank Jukes. Valkyrie going to be just going ahead and getting that damage mitigation with the royal focus there. Frank Jukes going to be slowed out. There's the root right underneath. Pushto going to be going out as well. They get the keep, and I think they're happy with it. So they're going to go ahead and just rotate into mid. Just start to siege that siege at this and just kind of poke and play it safe. I do believe, excuse me, Ominous Wrath. Royal focus is a 16 talent. This time though, yeah, they got they got quite quite a good sieging amount with that, but it looks like they want to go in further here. As Valkyrie gonna be just using that that wraith walk to go a little bit further. Spectral leech not gonna be connecting. Gonna get the clear onto this. Hanzo arrow gonna be coming out though. We do currently have a power slide out from the ETC. No follow up with any sort of uh, uh, mosh pit, but that is going to be Leork falling very very quickly. That will be a ring of frost hitting a couple members here. There is the ice block from the Malfurion at this time. There will be Tychus going into the commandeer and met it. Oh my god, the instant knockout from the Mosh, but it was enough to set them up to get a ton of value from the Tychus at this time, and that is going to be... Like, I think they got the Diablo kill, and it just reset all the stacks, if I'm not mistaken. And then they also got the uh, that Grey main there, and with that, they're going to push up these lanes a little bit more. Hedgy going to be exiting that... Oh, they're going to be moving on to Hedgy, though, as it looks like Stormtroopy is going to be trying to help. Not a lot of more disengage that they can do. I think they already burned as much as they could. They focused down that Tychus. And that will be a nice turnaround. That's exactly what they need here, just to kind of slow down 
the pacing of macro trash, making sure that you know they you you saw them right here. They were taking this bruiser camp. They were playing it because they were playing this map any way they wanted because they had that 16 advantage and they were they were able to kind of just fight in any sort of way. But they they punished them for that. They split the team in that in that rotation and they're going to go ahead and grab the camp themselves. Have that pushing into top lane. Malthio going to be going into the uh, Leoric here. And the other thing I didn't I didn't notice um, the uh, drawing a blank on it. Last rights. We do have a stack currently on the last rights for the uh, the Malthiel, as it looks like they're just posturing at this time. 16 is going to be slowly rolling in for the members of uh, Taco team. New York becoming a little bit of a nuisance here for Shade, as it looks like this will be the two camps crashing. Shrine's going to be activating in the next five seconds. They're going to need to get the clear into this lane and get onto that, as we do have Shade diving in onto Valkyrie a little bit. Bottom lane going to be held over by the members of Taco Team, the four-man, as we do have a rotation coming into top, and it looks like they're going to take a play out of their own book. Setting up in this bush, they're going to go ahead and get the knockback. That will be the, uh, excuse me, not the spectral, I can't think of the right words all of a sudden. Uh, not spectral lease, Wraithwalk. It's the Wraithwalk right out of there, going to be just fine. It looks like Draco are going to be clearing this out. They go ahead and get the camp in bottom lane. They're just creating pressure as we do. Frank Juke's going to go ahead and grab the top shrine. Rotation from the four-man at this time, too. This top, though, pushing in quite a bit. Going to maybe just take out the well a little bit. This is a four-man, though, in bottom, so they don't have anything to deal with this Leoric, and they're actually going to be leaving Leoric to their own as it... Ooh, Frank Juke's not in the best spot here. Going to go ahead... Going to need to get out of here as it looks like maybe they even want to take the fight. Cap available, but we also, as I noted, the Leoric's already on that point. There will be the root, and that will be the burst onto Diablo. Hanzo, we're all going to just split right between all these members, and they aren't able to get any further onto that as it looks like Leoric grabbed that point and got right out of there. ETC, Frank Juke's going to be going onto this point. Looks like Shade is going to be just hanging out right next to the altar. Having that availability to capture it right away as Frank Jukes is going to be on there. No one in this bottom lane as they did. Uh, they also pushed this up with these couple catapults. That will be the Dragonite. Mm, I might have spoke too soon. Oh, yeah. Are we getting that, that initial delay? But I don't think that will be enough as that will be Dragonite being picked up. Now that, that little bit of delay is, is big for them because they also give them a little bit extra time for that Diablo to get back. It still, I think, you know, still would have been available as Draco gets right out of there. Go ahead and pull away these talents as we're going to be going ahead and getting this, potentially, last big push. They're setting their eyes on the core at this time with the Dragonite. Ominous Wrath coming out from the, from the, uh, Leoric there. Dragonite moving onto the core. Rest of the team going to be slowly doing the same. Catapult stacking up. Commandeer Odin coming down at this time. That's the Apocalypse coming out as well. We do have Spurback getting dove on. We do have a, a Ring of Frost coming out as well. Mosh Pit going to be onto a couple of members. Just actually... <laughs> Getting the one there, I think, uh, but that will be uh, Tychus falling as well as Diablo. And with this, I don't think that they're going to be able to do it because Draco is diving in so very hard onto these members. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get the counter kill. And they get the kill simultaneously almost as it looks like they also lose their Jaina. Hanzo Arrow not going to be connecting. Valak going to be getting out of there, but the Dragonite has 31% left on it. I don't know if they're going to be able to end from this. Oh, they're going to be doing at least significant amount of damage as there is... Hanzo poking onto this. This? Ooh, this is close. Members of Macro Trash trying to end this, and I think with the Dragonite. Yes, this is going to be game. I was like, which? I'm not sure. Um, but that will be game number two going over to the members of Macro Trash. GG, well played.